Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room in Rockland, California. Let's have some fun and let's do a little experiment uh, with the help of uh, David W6DGH. Um, but first, before we do that, I wanna, I've got a bunch of projects going on. One is um, in the amplifier where the tube became defective only because it didn't get enough air through the socket. I took the defective tube, put it into a socket. I've mounted that in a box um, to turn it into sort of a nightlight. And I'll bring that up now. Um, oh, so the... Um, the screen up on top and then below that will be probably some uh, substantial LEDs. The bottom of the tube is also glass. I removed the uh, phenolic ring and it's a big mess in here, but that's the project. I hope to get it lit up and, and looking good. Um, and again, it's going to be my nightlight. Um, and it's an iMac uh, 3500Z. Some some of the comments on prior videos were, well, I I run 20 watts and I'm working in the world. What do I need 100 watts for? Or um, some websites have said, websites, uh, comments on the video, that you can't hear the difference between, um, let's say, 25 watts and 100 watts or 25 watts and 50 watts or 50 watts and 100 watts. My opinion is you can hear the difference, and in some cases it can be substantial. So David made this recording of different power levels, and it's very realistic because it involves changing in signal strength uh, as he's making the test. So you have to pay attention to what's, what's going on, and... Uh, in some cases, there may be a, a brief time where the weaker power level actually sounds stronger than the greater power level, and that's due to uh, changing in signal strength. But over time, um, there is there is a difference. And can you hear uh, the difference between 25 watts and 50, 50 watts? I think you can. So let's. I created a graphic with an S meter. Um, Put an S meter re reading on it. Uh, 100 watts equals S9. So anything less than that uh, is indicated power and uh, an S meter reading. And then the one test above 100 watts at 600 watts, uh, that's also plotted. So it'll make more sense when I play the, uh, the recording. And also we can go back and sample some of those to see if if the difference that we're hearing uh, is worth it. So that's the question. For those who say 20 watts is all I need, or some say 5 watts or 10 watts, I really think that's wrong, that 100 watts makes a difference. You may disagree, and if you do, great. Uh, put a comment below. Let me see if I can bring up the current sunspot cycle because <clears throat> that's the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. And you can see the red lines which were predicted values and where we actually are. Now, we had a big decrease in solar flares and other junk going on, coronal mass ejections, so we'll have to see what happens. In some cycles, there are two peaks if you look at the smooth numbers. Um, so it's, it actually has two peaks with a bit of a valley in between. But this is remarkable. And uh, below, below that on their screen is the solar flux. And you can see it's way the heck up here. Um, so it's so far looking really good. So let's go back uh, and take a quick look at this uh, sunspot cycle, and we're just going to spread it out, include a bunch of years. And I'll bring that down. So 
there was a prediction of a maunder minimum occurring here, uh, that this would be a lousy cycle and that the trend was downhill, downhill, and further downhill before it would turn around. Um, that hasn't happened. So uh, some have said there's a wobble in the movement of the sun and that's contributing to the different values. I don't know that. I'm just pleased. Point being, you may be on 10 meters and think, wow, oh, this is great. I'm going to put up a 10 meter Yagi and that's all I'm ever going to need. Well, when the sunspot cycle starts to go downhill, you will wish you had a 20 meter antenna. Um, 10 can be dead for days and 20 just roaring back to life. Uh, including 40. 40 can be a lot of fun uh, at night. All right, let's um, let's play the video that David uh, did the audio on, and I edited uh, that video and added some graphics. So let's look at that now and uh, see. Um, trying to bring it up and see what you think. Let's do three more tests, three more side-by-side -side tests. Let's compare 5 watts to 100 watts uh, counting. And then let's compare, we'll use that 100 watts again. We'll compare it to 600 watts where David turns on the linear amplifier. And then let's, uh, let's do side-by-side uh, -side between 10 and 25 watts. So a little more than doubling of the power. So first let's do... Uh, a comparison of 5 watts versus 100 watts. So here's 5 watts counting. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, and here's 100 watts. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's play the 100 watts again of David counting, and we'll do 600 watts after that. When David turns on his linear amplifier, it completely captures the noise. So it's almost like FM. It's not. It's a 600 mile distance, but still it it's as if we switched over to FM. It's just just that much of a change. Now let's do one more comparison where we're about doubling the power. Uh, let's go from 10 watts to 25 watts. That's a little more than double. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do that. If you'd like to contribute through Patreon and PayPal, uh, it's in the description. Um, but most importantly, do subscribe and either do a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I hope you found all of this as interesting as we did to make it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, again, if you've enjoyed this, uh, please do subscribe. I'm Jim.
W6LG in Rockland, California, saying 73. See you the next time. Next one, I think, is going to be really interesting, too, and I'll save that for when I get it done. Bye-bye.